one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. This is the word right here. Okay, Duck, uh, back to the cornfield. Groucho, before we get started here tonight, I'd like to remind you that last week when John Charles Thomas was on the show, he made some fairly strong remarks about rock and roll music. And the lady got up out of the audience and came up here on the stage and you invited them back on the show. Well, they're going to be here tonight. That's oh. I'm just telling you that before oh. we get started. And the secret word is... Uh, it's still grass. It's grass. Yeah. It's still grass. That's the best kind. Huh? <laughs> well, Groucho, we have some, um, something unusual for you right now. We have two special guests. The first is Mr. Val Christensen, who will tell you about himself a little later on. His partner is Miss Kathy Gabriel. And um, I thought it might be interesting for you and our audience if I invited her to appear here in her working clothes. Uh, Mr. Christensen and uh, Miss Gabriel, would you come in, please? Meet Groucho Marx. George, will you? Well, honestly, I'm just trying to fix the microphone. You too, everybody out! <laughs> well, they broke my sacroiliac. <laughs> but it was worth it. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Uh, say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. <laughs> and these are your waking clothes? Yes, this is the bathing suit I wore in the Miss Universe contest. Oh. I'm Miss Ohio. Uh, you're Miss Ohio, yes. huh? You say you're Miss Ohio? Yes. Well, if you keep wearing that outfit on these cold nights, it's going to get a little chilly around Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been on this show 11 years, and this is the first time a beautiful girl ever showed up in a bathing suit. Oh, I think it's an honor, Groucho. I'm... Why didn't this happen 11 years ago when I was 30 years younger? <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, would you mind describing yourself for the benefit of our audience at home? Well, can't they see me on the TV screen? I don't think the husbands can. <laughs> They've been breathing so hard, they've fogged up their TV screen. <laughs> well... Well, go ahead, describe yourself, Miss Gabriel. In uh, other words, Gabriel, blow your horn. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. Um, I knew I'd say it, too. <laughs> Would you mind giving us your measurements? You can take them back later, but... Uh, <laughs> 35, 22, 37. 35, 37, 72. Uh, Let's see, uh, lumped all together, you're 94. <laughs> That's the same as I am. <laughs> Kathy, you just stand there for a minute. I have certain moral obligations to your partner. <laughs> My obligations to your partner, I predict, will be discharged in about two seconds. <laughs> I would think so. You're Val Christensen? Yes, I am. Well, that's am. enough out of you. Now, <laughs> how did you get here, Mr. Christensen? I just walked in Miss, with Miss Gabriel. You just walked in with her? That's right. Well, so what? It's who walks out with her that counts. <laughs> no I wonder I didn't. surprised. <laughs> I do, too. Val, you have a slight accent. Uh, where are you from originally? Uh, Kellen Ball, Denmark. Where? I was born in Kellen Ball, Denmark. Kellen Ball? Born. 52 miles from Copenhagen. Oh. Well, Denmark is a wonderful country. It's one of the most progressive countries in Europe. They're getting a lot of American tourists there, aren't they? Yes, sure are. And it's getting to be one of your biggest industries. And you sure need your money over there. <laughs> You're the other greedy type, aren't you? Well, what, what, do you what do you that. do there in, in Denmark? Well, I'm mayor of Cheyenne, Wyoming now. <laughs> How long have you been mayor, Your Honor? For four years. Four years, mm -hmm. huh? Are you ready for another term? No, I'll tell you. I'm not a politician. I'm a milkman. 
You're a milkman? Yes, sir. And you're the mayor of Cheyenne? That's right. Well, politics and the milk business are very much alike. That's what a fan told me yes, once. that's true. <laughs> they, they both depend on the amount of pull you have. <laughs> Did you ever hear of a cow that just gives buttermilk? We used to have them, but we don't anymore. Yes, but we have one. You know, what else can a cow give buttermilk? <laughs> Send her back to Denmark, nothing will. <laughs> she may go with him, too. She probably will. Yeah. Well, since you're the mayor of Cheyenne, I guess we owe you 10 seconds to brag about your town. Go ahead, uh, tell us what's so hot about I'll Cheyenne. I'll tell you, we have the finest grass in Cheyenne. Our parks are beautiful. Wait a minute. <laughs> are you here again? Yeah, I'm here again. <coughs> Say, how do you like this job? How do you like being a duck? Mr. Marks, this is the most ridiculous question you ask me, how I like the duck. I don't, I hate it. You, uh, you're afraid I may steal it, the money you strap. No, I'm afraid you strap. might steal it. I don't care about the money. It's $50 for you and 50 for you. Oh, all right. The secret word tonight was bathing suit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, up she goes now. I cannot lift myself. Day by you day. can't. Day. Come out. Will you take the duck away, please? Thank you very much. Goodbye. 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 Arrivederci. Arrivederci. I'll be there. It seems to me like you took up a lot of that 15 seconds I was going to have to sell you on Cheyenne. Oh, yes. Well, tell us about Cheyenne. I'll tell you it's the finest city in the United in, in States. In what way? Oh, in every way. Beautiful parks, fine people living there. Yeah. We have the best hunting and fishing of any state. Best hunting and fishing? Fishing, that's right. Yeah. We hunt elk, deer, antelope, and bear. You hunt bear, you say? Yes. <laughs> Did you hear that, Kathy? You can hunt bear in Cheyenne. And Kathy, you haven't got far to go. Now, how does it feel to be standing next to a mayor, Kathy? I guess you haven't been around many politicians, have you? Oh, yes, I've been around a few. I worked with uh, the governor and a couple mayors and a senator. You did, huh? Yes. Well, how did that happen? Oh, they asked me to appear at political conventions and parades and so forth. Mm -hmm. Did you wear this outfit? Uh, oh, no. No cheesecake. Oh. <laughs> no cheesecake. Mm -hmm. Well, that lets you out with your dairy over there. It does. <laughs> you don't call that cheesecake, do you, what you're wearing there? Oh, no. This isn't cheesecake. I wouldn't call it pig's knuckles, either. <laughs> well, from a young oh. married couple last week. <laughs> And we don't waste anything up here. It's like the Swift Packing Company. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's play your bet your life. We've got more... It's handsome bets. You have three right now. Get the next one right, and you'll have your $1,000. Hot dog. <laughs> what can't be cured... Must be endured. Must be endured. By cracker, you've won the money. Eh? Four in a row. <laughs> Now then, you won $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You might even get a crack at $10,000. So you go over and sit down and think about it, huh? And thanks for being on the show. And remember, you're the mayor of Cheyenne and a married man, and behave yourself up there. Reasonably well. Okay, reasonably well. <laughs> yes. And you? <laughs> Goodbye, dear. Very interesting remarks about rock and roll music last week on our show, and Miss Roberta Rene, who was in our audience and took exception to this, uh, and you invited them back again to That's continue right. the fight. Well, they're here now, so folks, come in, please, and see Groucho again right now. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. We have a different secret word. Uh... <laughs> Welcome to your Bet Your Life. We have a different secret word than we had when you were here last. And if you say it, you'll divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. John Charles Thomas, we found out about your history last week, so let's find out something about Miss Rene. Is that the way you pronounce it? Yes, Groucho. Rene's background. Should I call you Roberta or Miss Rene or what? They just call me Rene Groucho. Rene Groucho. Well, that's a very nice name. <laughs> now, where are you from, Miss Groucho? <laughs> I was born in Kansas City, Missouri, Groucho, at the oh. very early age of four weeks. Uh, you were born at the age of four weeks? Well, that's quite a trick. 
My, my, my mother and father and I moved to uh, Waterloo, New York, and made our home there because my father was associated with the Gene Geneva, New York Preserving Company. Do you have a job, Renee? Yes, Groucho. Uh, what do you do? Uh... I'm a musician. I play the piano at George Radovich's Ocean Beach Bowling Center in the cocktail lounge, which is called the Arizona Room. And then sometimes... Where is this? In San Diego. Well, uh, Fenneman introduced you as Miss Renee. I assume you're single. Are you interested in matrimony? I'm a woman. <laughs> well, even with these cheap eyeglasses, I didn't think you were Sonny Tufts. <laughs> that's, that's besides the point. I say, are you interested in matrimony? Indeed I am, well, Grant. That's the kind of an answer I want to hear. <laughs> now, have we overlooked anything? Do you have any other interests? <laughs> You haven't mentioned Elvis Presley. I seldom do, unless I stub my toe. <laughs> what is your connection with uh, Mr. Presley? <clears throat> Groucho, I'm the president of the San Diego Elvis Presley Fan Club and the honorary president over 100 Southern California chapters of Elvis Presley Fan Clubs. Well, that's, that's quite impressive. Aren't you impressed by that, Mr. Thomas? Very much. <laughs> well, I'd love to join the Elvis Presley fan club, Renee, but I'm too busy with my other groups. Oh, you see, I happen to be sergeant at arms of the Rudy Valley Raccoon and Adenoid Club. <laughs> I'm going to give you a membership card. Now, Renee, how many Presley fan clubs and members are there? Do you happen to know? Uh, yes, Groucho, approximately uh, 5,500 active ones in the United States, Canada, Japan, and What China. do you mean, active? You mean they're all wiggling simultaneously? <laughs> oh, we wiggle. Does he have any uh, fans in foreign countries? Oh, yes, he does. We have uh, clubs that are springing up all over in Japan and China. In, in the Orient? Oh, say? yes, sure. You say rock and roll has spread to Japan and Very China? Definitely, certainly. Well, that'll teach him to send us the Asiatic flu. <laughs> America strikes back. <laughs> now, does your fan club save any useful purpose? I mean, do you ever do anything worthwhile for Elvis? Yes, uh, Groucho, we have several charities in his name. And, uh, well, the, we have, uh, San Diego Fan Club has given Elvis two awards. We gave him one in September of 56, a plaque. And then we gave him a gold loving cup last January on his birthday for his first film, Love Me Tender. Do you have any souvenirs of Elvis, Renee? Oh, I'm just loaded with them, Groucho. I can't hardly get in and out of my room. I brought a few with me. What have you got there? Oh, I've got some Elvis Presley teddy bear perfume, and this is the sexiest <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and I have a guitar pick, which I stole. And I have uh, this uh, part of this uh, button, which Let's was see. from uh, the MGM Pass when I visited Elvis last uh, June. That's a nice thing to have. Well, it certainly <laughs> is. <laughs> Anything that looks like him is a nice thing to have. And I also finagled around and I have two locks of his hair. You have locks of his hair? Do you have any cream cheese to go with it? No, but I want to tell you something else I have too, which what? is my very greatest prized possession. And that is the red and white western outfit that he wore in the picture loving you when he sings Teddy Bear. And I wouldn't take a million dollars for it. In fact, it's insured. <laughs> now, John, last week you gave us an opinion of rock and roll that wasn't exactly flattering. Do you, do you still feel the same way about it? I've been, um, I've been thinking it over, Groucho. I like it even less. <laughs> right. Well, give us your side of the story. What's good about rock and roll music? Well, uh, uh, Groucho, the way I feel about uh, rock and roll, I think it dates clear back to very early New Orleans, Dixieland, jazz, pop, bop, right on up through rock and roll, and I certainly think that rock and roll is a combination of folk songs. <laughs> There'll be a three-minute wait here while Mr. Thomas registers disgust. <laughs> Why are you so prejudiced against this kind of music, John? Well, rock and roll is, uh, 
It's just too frothy. It's not, it has no truth in it. It has no uh, expressive beauty. This young lady spoke a moment ago of uh, uh, this rock and roll and jazz music being folk music. That's right. I would like to take issue with that. Uh, yeah. Folk music has a very, very, very deep place in my heart. For instance, uh, in the gloaming, oh, my darling, drink to me only with thine eyes. And if you want Western, for instance, home, home on the range. Now this is folk music. Yes, yeah, very good. sing a chorus of Home on the Range. <laughs> huh? Play a chorus. What key about would you sing it in? Oh, about E flat. E flat? I don't know if they can play in sharps and flats. Home, home on the range Where the deer and the antelope play Where seldom is heard Discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day. Uh, John? I think in fairness to Rene, you should do, give us a little hot music now. I think I'll leave the hot music to Rene. She okay. can do it better than I. Before I forget it, John, last week you sang The Golfer's Lament on our show, and we've had a lot of people asking where they can buy the record. Now, what should I tell them? Well, just tell them to address, uh, address me, John Charles Thomas, in Apple Valley, California, and they'll get the record right away. Good. Good enough. Now, uh, Rene, have you changed your mind about the relative merits of... Stop wiggling there, will you? Well, the Wigglers Club, I got to wiggle. Have you changed your mind about the relative merits of music? Uh, no, I certainly haven't, Groucho, but I would like to say that I do feel that Mr. Thomas has a very beautiful voice, and he sings everything well. Well, Renee, if you're thinking of switching your affections from Elvis to John, <laughs> forget it. If John gave you even one lock of his hair, he'd be out of business. <laughs> right. Well, we haven't settled anything by this erudite discussion, but I'm sure rock and roll is here to stay. I only wish that I wasn't. John, last week, you were generous enough to give a service man in the audience a chance to make some money in the quiz. Do you want to repeat it this week? I think I'd like to... Uh... And I hope he wins a lot of money. Well, I hope he does, too. Is there but, a service uh, man? Before I go, may I just uh, say how very delightful it's been to uh, hear your views on <coughs> rock and roll. Thank and you, Groucho, Mr. Thomas. <laughs> I can't tell you, really, I can't tell you how very grand it's been to be here with you. John, we're Thank honored you very much for the opportunity of this we're, association. We're honored to have you here. And I wish, I wish you would just do me a favor. And what's that? Buy one of the records? No. I'll send you one, but uh, I... No, no, I'll pay like, for it. Okay. <laughs> I would like you to come up to Apple Valley. I certainly will. I won't put out the uh, red carpet, but I'll give you a beautiful green sword to hit balls on, and I'd love to play with you. Fine, I'll bring the clubs Anytime and come up. Come. Fine. It's been a great pleasure. Good night and good luck. <laughs> Can we find a service man out there who would like to win some money? <laughs> How do you do? What is your name? Bob Pippin. This is Rene Presley. <laughs> Bob, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Bob Pippin, huh? Right. And where are you from? Kankakee, Illinois. Kankakee. I have heard. Now you have chosen nicknames of famous people, past and present. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win a thousand dollars. Now remember, we want you one answer between you, your partners here. <coughs> Who was known as the little corporal? Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte, that's right, yes. You have one right already. <laughs> All right, now what Civil War general was known as Stonewall? Jackson. 
Jax Jackson is right. Joe Jackson used to play with the White Sox. Yeah, we have two right now. Get the next two right, and you'll have a thousand dollars. Who is known as the Lone Eagle? Talk it over. Charles Lindbergh. Elvis Lindbergh is right. <laughs> One more right, and the thousand dollars is yours. Now, what Russian was known as the Mad Monk? Stalin? <laughs> Who? Joseph. No, no, it was, uh, it was Rasputin. Yes. One wrong now. One wrong. Who is known as the Swedish Nightingale? He was a big wrestler at one time. Who is known as the Swedish Nightingale? Me. You should have known this. You're a musician. Well, the time is gone. It's Jenny Lynn. Oh. And you now have two wrongs, so you're out of the game. I'm Don't sorry. Don't you know she was... Uh, what's that? I said they have two wrongs. You, you put them out of the game already? Well, I didn't personally. That's just the, uh, the oh. scoring here. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, because they're a nice couple, and they might have got married if they'd have won some money. <laughs> All right, you get this right, and you're going to get $100, and this is a very tough question, and we don't want any help from the audience at all. Who was president during the Coolidge administration? <laughs> Calvin Coolidge is right. That's, I'm sorry you didn't win more money, but thanks anyway for being with us. You bet your life. Thank you, Dad. And be sure to give my regards. <laughs> now, if you decide to try for the 10000 and you fail, you're going to wind up with a total of $500. Now, what are you going to do? You're going Lady to... Luck's been with us so far. We think maybe she'll stay with us once yeah. more. Well, you certainly have a good mascot here. <laughs> That's right. You, you are going to go for the big money. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now get together and you pick a number from one to ten and then spin the wheel. If any number... Don't kiss her, Mayor. Or no. <laughs> if any number besides the one you pick comes up, this question is worth two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. However, if your number comes up, this question is worth ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Now, what number do you want? Number five. Five? five? Well, give it a turn. Number was five and it landed on nine, so this question is worth two thousand dollars. Andersonville was the Pulitzer Prize winning novel for 1956. For two thousand dollars, who wrote Andersonville? Talk it over. Wait till the music stops. you have an answer? Lady Luck played a third. You don't know? No. Well, it was McKinley Cantor. That's Eddie Cantor's father. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you missed it, but you wound up with $500, so that isn't too bad. Congratulations, and thanks for being on the show. And, and I'll pleasure. see you later. And uh, I'll show him. the only Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000, and if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. This is the word right here. Okay, Duck, uh, back to the cornfield. Groucho, before we get started here tonight, I'd like to remind you that last week when John Charles Thomas was on the show, he made some fairly strong remarks about rock and roll music, and the lady got up out of the audience and came up here on the stage, and you invited them back on the show? Well, they're going to be here tonight. That's, oh. I'm just telling you that before oh. we get started. And the secret word is... Uh, it's still grass. It's still grass. Yeah. It's still grass. That's the best kind. Huh? <laughs> well, Groucho, we have some, um, something unusual for you right now. We have two special guests. The first is Mr. Val Christensen, who will tell you about himself a little later on. His partner is Miss Kathy Gabriel, and um, I thought it might be interesting for you and our audience if I invited her to appear here in her working clothes. 
Uh, Mr. Christensen and uh, Miss Gabriel, would you come in, please? Meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> Welcome to it, George, will you? I honestly am just trying to fix the microphone. You too, everybody out! <laughs> then they broke my sacroiliac. <laughs> but it was worth it. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Uh, say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. 